All right, this is something I've wanted to get off my chest for about 10 years. Of course, in those 10 years, I've somehow managed to get more than 100,000 people to listen to me. So instead of this being a PowerPoint presentation to a conference room of bewildered colleagues who have to deal with me finally breaking, all of you guys get to hear it instead. I'll be honest, I don't really get many angry comments on my videos, so, you know, genuinely thank you for that. But the topic I get the most angry comments about is Americans raging about me joking about unit systems. Those people are clearly insecure about something because I've never actually mentioned the US in any of those jokes. If anything, the UK is worse for messing up units. We'll get back to that. There may be some oil field workers watching this thinking, hang on, this guy's wrong, we didn't work like this. And you're of course correct. Everything I'm going to discuss here is used inconsistently to varying degrees depending on where in the world you are and what company you work for. This video is about my experience and that of many others I worked with. But imagine taking a look at US customer units and saying, ah, this is great, but how can we make it much, much worse? That's how we arrive at today's cursed topic, oil field units. I am going to have to try so hard to not swear in this video. Let's start with volume. In the oil and gas industry, what do we use to measure volume? Well, that depends on what fluid we're dealing with. What? Yeah, there are different units for different fluids. You've probably already heard of the unit for oil, a barrel, or in its abbreviated form, BBL. Why BBL? It's an abbreviation for blue barrel. That is because in the late 19th century, when the oil industry was becoming established, different companies shipped their oil in their own various sized barrels. The Standard Oil Company used blue barrels, which were all of a standardized size. Off to a great start here, aren't we? A blue barrel is 42 gallons. US gallons. If you're working in the North Sea, best not mix that up with imperial gallons, which people do all the time. Because people from the UK don't use gallons anymore, apart from for vehicle fuel efficiency, for some reason. What do you think the abbreviation for a thousand barrels is? KBBL? No, it's M, an antiquated form of writing a thousand in Latin. A million is MM, and a billion is GBBL. Short for giga? Oh, we switched back to Greek there, huh? Not even consistent with our classical languages, are we? Now, you're probably thinking, yeah, yeah, this is just for trading or something. Nobody actually does calculations with this. The oil industry is enormous. It's responsible for some of the largest engineering projects of all time. Well, wrong. Everything I discuss in this video is applied inconsistently. If you work for a North American company like I did, everyone will insist everything is done with these ridiculous units. That includes all your engineering calculations. If you work for, say, Total or Equinor, you're probably going to be doing your calculations in SI units, but then converting to oil field units at the end when you go onto the rig and actually talk to the drill crew. Do we think this may cause a lot of issues? All right, we're still on volume. We haven't even moved on from that yet. Oil wells produce gas too. How do we define a barrel of natural gas? We don't, because gas is measured in a completely different unit. Gas comes in standard cubic feet. This is somewhat easier to work with than barrels since it fits within the existing US customary units definition. It's still incredibly difficult to do calculations with, but much better than blue barrels. Now, lengths. They're feet and inches. If there isn't a dedicated oil field unit, the industry defaults to US customary units. Many engineers in the US have commented on videos that I've made before making clear that in the US, actual engineering calculations are done in SI units. Well, not in oil and gas. Everyone carries this stupid little green book around, which is full of lookup tables to deal with conversion factors between such riveting problems as barrels per foot of hole. If you've seen the old episode of The Simpsons where the Germans buy the power plant and keep pulling out that tiny little English phrase book, that is what everyone in oil and gas looks like all the time. Oh, also, on two occasions, I had to redo calculations because it turned out someone was using one of these. That is a measuring tape demarcated in feet, except those aren't inches. Those are tenths of a foot. Some people would write it like this, and some would write it like this. Sometimes someone would take a measurement with this without realizing it was tenths and not inches. 
spoke. I worked with used to call this rig tape, although I'm not sure this particular madness is exclusive to oil and gas. Density. Oh boy. Nobody calls it density because apparently everyone in the industry has a huge complex about appearing like a nerd in front of the drill crew. During drilling, a well is full of drilling fluid. That fluid is more often referred to as drilling mud. The industry term for the density of this fluid is <sighs> mud weight. This isn't just inconvenient, it is flat out incorrect. Sure, it'll come from a colloquial term people used more than a century ago, but insisting modern day engineers speak in this pigeon engineering lingo to each other, I just found it exhausting. Anyway, mud weight is expressed in pounds per gallon. As we shall see, if you don't have your green book to hand, this is extremely inconvenient to work with, and it's written like this. Which causes confusion, as contractors from outside the industry sometimes think this is some kind of derivative of the flawed unit of concentration, parts per million. Which, by the way, was also widely used in the oil and gas industries, despite also being a terrible unit. In fact, if you're fracking a well, the pounds of propant in the fluid is also expressed in pounds per gallon. But in that case, that is referred to as a concentration, not density or weight. We're still not done. There's another unit of density, API gravity. The API stands for American Petroleum Institute. I don't think this is used in calculations. It's just used to express the nature of produced hydrocarbons. It's an arbitrary rescaling of specific gravity, which itself is an arbitrary unit. I have no idea why it exists. Probably the biggest horror story in oil and gas units is power, energy, and temperature. Okay, I know this video isn't supposed to be an advert for SI units, but this is the main reason SI units are great. Watch this. If I take one kilogram and apply one newton of force to it, it will accelerate at one meter per second per second. If I do this over a distance of one meter, I have used one joule of energy. And if I use an engine capable of doing that in one second, that engine is producing one watt of power. Though not as tidally related, watts and joules are also easy to use in thermal energy calculations requiring no unit conversions. Oh, and also, flowing an electrical current of one amp across one volt of potential difference requires one watt of electrical power. Even without getting into oil field units, the US customary and indeed the imperial measurement systems, well, they don't deal so well with power and energy. Let's take a look at an oil platform. We have gas turbines here to power the platform. On the platform is a rig. The rig has a diesel generator to power itself independent of the platform. That generator, amongst other things, powers the mud pumps, the winch to lift the drill string and the top drive to rotate it. Now, remember how a joule is a newton acting over a meter. Yep, a joule is a newton meter. So you'd think energy would be expressed in foot pounds and power in foot pounds per second. Side note, a pound is actually a unit of force, not mass. Never mind, don't think too hard about that. Alas, no. Everybody insists on patronising the drill crew who may apparently get confused as the torque on the bit is also expressed in foot-pounds. So everything in red here is usually expressed in horsepower. But what is a horsepower? Well, that depends on who you ask. Sometimes it's the power needed to lift 550 pounds one foot in one second. Sometimes it's the power needed to lift 75 kilograms one meter in one second. But what? Uh, wait, was that defined with metric units? Do they both give different results? Yes and yes. But what about the fluid pumped by the mud pumps? How much horsepower does that provide to, say, a downhole mud motor? If we were using SI units, we'd simply get the answer in watts by multiplying the pressure by the flow rate. In the wacky world of oil field units, we have to take the flow rate which absolutely everyone expresses in barrels, convert it to gallons, and remember those are US gallons, and then we multiply it by the pressure in PSI and divide it by 1714. Actually, side note on that too. So in the UK, most people, including me, would say that number as 1714. In the US, it would be 1714. Neither's better than the other, they're just a minor regional language variation. But... For some inexplicable reason, in the UK oil and gas industry, everyone would say it the American way. 
I have absolutely no idea why. This is like a minor mystery. I caught people outside the workplace saying it the British way, so it must have been a conscious choice. Regular listeners will already know I often use American spellings and pronunciations. That's not really through choice, it's just something I've picked up over the years. Why do oil workers in the UK spell everything using British English, pronounce this as aluminium, this as Z, but consistently do numbers the US way? Like, there must be a backstory here. Anyway, horsepower. Don't worry if you forget the formula, it's in the green book. Less all the loss factors, that gives us horsepower delivered by the fluid. I genuinely can't remember which of the two horsepower options mentioned above it gives, but you can bet everyone mixes that up too. And how much fuel would your generator burn per hour to do all of that? Don't even bother trying to calculate it, because the unit of energy that people desperately crowbarred into this madness is the British Thermal Unit, or the BTU. That is defined in terms of thermal energy delivered and so are not directly relatable to mechanical energy. And the BTU is defined differently in different countries, despite having a literal country in its name. That doesn't stop everyone getting out their green book and giving their final answer to mechanical energy problems in British thermal units. Oh, and remember those gas turbines? Well, GE or Rolls-Royce don't take part in any of this nonsense. So everything related to power generation on this part of the platform is in watts. Everything here is in horsepower. Just to confound things even further, the industry has its own arbitrary unit of energy, barrel of oil equivalent. The energy you'd get from burning one barrel of oil. I don't think I ever saw it used in a calculation, so there's that, I guess. To give oil and gas a slight break, I now work in the electricity industry, which insists on expressing energy in watt hours or therms, which are related to that unit I gave for natural gas volume earlier. They often express power in kilowatt hours per hour. Do I need to go into how ridiculous that is? Why does the world find it so difficult to use joules and watts? Oh, Mr. Darcy, how many units of permeability do we have on this fine day? Is how I felt talking to reservoir engineers because for some completely unknown reason, the oil field unit for permeability is the Darcy. Permeability is an absolutely critical property, as we need to know how much oil and gas will flow through the rock and into our well. Now, in hydrogeology, where SI units are more common, or certainly are from my limited experience, the unit is square metres. That sounds a little bit odd, but it's just a consequence of dimensional analysis. Much as the Newton meter feels like an odd way to express energy, permeability is defined as length squared. Explanation on screen for those interested. In the case of energy, that unit was given a name, the joule, so it sounds more inviting. In the case of permeability, that never happened, so I presume oil field workers just took an obsolete unit and started using that because it had a name, so they wouldn't sound like nerds. No disrespect to Henri Darcy, who was basically the father of hydrogeology and was working with what he had at the time. But the Darcy is a terrible unit in the modern world. It's derived from multiple unit systems. One cubic centimetre of material with one Darcy of permeability permits one cubic centimetre of fluid with a viscosity of one millipascal seconds to flow through it every second if one atmosphere of pressure differential is applied. One atmosphere of pressure is an arbitrary unit, which means the Darcy doesn't fit into any unit system and it definitely doesn't fit in with oil field units. The few calculations I ever saw that related to permeability were actually done with SI units and then converted to Darcy's at the end. The only other unit I can remember specific to the industry was an existing measurement that was just obnoxiously renamed. Curvature of an oil well. Any normal person would just call this radius of curvature and express it in units of length. For some reason, in oil and gas, everyone calls it dogleg severity and expresses it in degrees per hundred foot drilled. Alright, to round things off, let's do a very simple worked example just to demonstrate how much of a hassle all of this was. This is about the simplest example I could think of for a drilling engineering calculation. Here's a well. It's 10,000 feet deep and we've run 9 and 5 eighths casing down a 12 and 3 quarter inch hole. We want to pump cement down the casing and up the backside so we have 500 feet of cement on the backside of the casing. What volume of cement do we need? 
I was going to do pressure calculations here too, which is why I added some fluid densities, but you guys don't really need to sit here and watch me do calculations all day. Let's just do the volume. This is a dead simple calculation, just the volume of 500 feet of hole minus the volume of the casing outer diameter. And we all know how to do that, just pi r squared times the length. So for SI units, we'll do just that. I don't really have much to add. 5.4 cubic meters, done, simple. Okay, oil field units. Bear in mind, I deliberately gave the original dimensions in oil field units, so we're working with round numbers here. All right, same calculation, simple. Did you spot my mistake? Yeah, the casing diameter is in inches, but the hole is in feet. Okay, so 12 inches in a foot. Multiply the answer by 12. And that's the answer in cubic inches, which is of no use to anyone. Okay, so I thought I was prepared to record this, but then I realised at this point I don't know how many cubic inches are in a US gallon. So this is me going away to look that up. All right, so I'm back. It's 216. And now we need to divide again by 42 because there are 42 US gallons in a barrel. And there is our answer, 33.9 barrels. Again, that was an incredibly simple calculation and it was already a faff. Now just imagine having to keep track of which units you're using when pressure, temperature, power and density are all added to the mix. Of course, in reality, nobody in the industry would write out their calculations like this. They'd have gone and got their green book and looked up the barrels per foot of 12 and 3 quarter times 9 and 5 eighths inch annulus thereby taking twice as long and making the calculations harder to check. There were a few reasons why I chose to leave the oil and gas industry, but I am absolutely not clickbaiting you when I say the unit system was a major factor. When you step off a helicopter and the driller immediately starts berating you for being a graduate that's obsessed with stupid metric units, completely unprompted from you, when you walk into an office and see a conversion table on the wall with two columns, one labelled metric and one labelled proper, or when someone with a PhD in engineering and 30 years of experience starts insisting to you that pressure isn't rho gh in oil and gas, it gets exhausting. Aside from being a complete waste of my and many other people's time, this obsession of adhering to a disparate and impractical unit system made the whole industry feel kind of amateurish to me. There was a kind of built-in snobbishness about it too. I'm convinced that many veterans in the field used it as a form of gatekeeping, an excuse to tell younger workers to forget everything you learned at university. I wasn't going to do that, so I quit. <laughs>